Yeah, good evening. Once more, we are starting with um, root cause analysis. And we are going to use the technique called the uh, fishbowl diagram to discuss our root cause analysis. A fishbone diagram is used to identify the source of variation within a process. It helps to identify the root cause of a problem. It helps it equally helps to identify the effects of the problem in order to identify the appropriate solution. In so many, in so many cases, it's called the cause and effect. Because it identifies the cause of the problem and the effect of the problem. Is a very powerful tool in business analysis for identifying the problem and the cause. And the way it is done, looking at this diagram, is called fishbone, fishbone diagram, because the diagram looks like a fishbone. Like this is the head of the fish. And this is the bone. So if you if you know fish very well, you see that it looks like a fish. That's why it's called fish bone diagram. Very popular and very powerful. So how do we use it? The head of the fish bone diagram is the the main problem. So looking at this diagram, we are trying to find out the cause of the increase in invoice error for a particular company. There's a lot of errors in their invoice and is a problem. Some of you that works within finance department or within account receivable, you know what this means when there is error. When you are trying to post a voucher into the system and there is error, it's going to, it's not going to work. So this error problem is what we are trying to resolve. We are trying to find out the cause and the problem, the, the cause and the effect using this fishbone diagram. So here we have a method. In fishbone diagram, we have eight factors. I mean, six factors that we use to find the problems. So the factor must be associated in one of these, the problem must be associated in one of these uh, six factors. Number one factor is the method. Number two, uh, oh please mute yourself. Number two is equipment. Number three is environment material, measure, and man. So these are the six factors that is causing problem uh, uh, in an organization or in the process according to fishbone diagram. So applying this fishbone diagram within this problem, let's see how 
we are going to use this fish bone diagram to find out the cause of this uh, increase in invoice error, which is the problem here. Looking at the method here, method means the method of uh, generating this invoice is a cumbersome problem, uh, uh, process and is a manual entry. And this is why there is problem, there's error because most of the time, data these days, we try to automate our data these days to avoid this uh, manual entry to reduce error. So whenever you are using manual entry, is all, there's always room for error and is uh, is cumbersome, can be tiring. So when you have, you, you, you write like. 50 invoices in a day. You see, it, 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 before you know it, you start making mistakes. Number two is equipment. Now, the company does not have inadequate printers to print these invoices. And uh, number one is, uh, and another one is system integrated. The system integration is not there. The system is not integrated. Number three here is environment. So even this equipment will still have uh, this uh, incompatible system. The system is not integrated, and even the one we're trying to integrate is not compatible with each other. So there's a lot of issues in terms of equipment. Now in terms of environment, for er ergonom ergon ergonomics and uh, noisy office. So there's a lot of uh, the environment too is not favorable. Then another factor here is material. And under material you have poor paper quality. Say they are using um, A4 and the, what the printer is using A4, and then maybe they are trying to use another another set of um, paper quality. Another one is delay in paper supply. Their suppliers, their inv inventory suppliers, do not supply them paper on time. Another one is uh, poor audit time. That is to measure the capacity, to measure the efficiency they, they use in. So they have poor audits. So no one is even auditing their work. So no periodic audit. They just behave the way it pleases them in the finance uh, where they are generating these invoices. Another one is uh, human capital or human resource or personnel, which is called man. Here you see low morale. Maybe they are not paying them on time. They are even owing them, maybe like two, three months salary. And they've affected their morale. Another one here is um, increased workload. You see, the work of um, three people, because they are trying to save costs, they want to use one person to do it. So increase, so one person is overloaded. And another one is uh, poor technical support. They are not giving them 
enough technical support when they demand for technical support. And all these factors put together is the cause of this increase in invoice error. So by the time they improve on all this method, equipment, environment, material, measure, and man, you find out that this problem will disappear. So that is how you use fishbone diagram to, to do business analysis to drive down to the root cause. And looking at all this, all this method, it has gone down to the root cause of this particular problem. So the next thing we are going to look at is do you have any question on um, fishbone diagram or this particular root cause um, root cause analysis technique? There are so many other methods you can use to do root cause analysis. It's not only fishbone diagram. There's another method called YY analysis. YY analysis means you keep on asking why, 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 why did you do this? Why did you do that? Until you get, but we are not going to, we're only going to use, we are only treating this fishbone diagram. If you note, note uh, master fishbone diagram is enough and is more popular in, um, Analyzing, analyzing the root cause of a problem. So the next thing is uh, gap analysis. A gap is a problem, issue or challenge and could be an opportunity for improvement. Gap analysis compares to different states of something the current state and the desired state, and then come up with the gap within the two states. So looking at this diagram, this is the current state, and this is the desired state. So this is the assist, this is the to be. And the action to get to, to be is the gap. So that is the deficiency. So we're going to use this particular case study to analyze gap analysis. We've been treating gap analysis. I think this is the second time we're treating this gap analysis since we started this particular model. So this, what we are looking at is the, the customers, and this is a restaurant case study. The customers are complaining that it takes too long to serve their food when they make an order in a restaurant. So we're now using gap analysis to analyze this particular problem. And let's look at the problem, which is number one here. The customer complained that the food take too long to be served. What is the current situation? So for instance, this is a problem we say, what is the current situation? It's just like we are telling you to go and do your requirement gathering to find out the current situation. And after your requirement gathering, you start asking customers questions. You find out that it takes an average of 14 minutes to serve their food. So now, this is the 
the problem? What is the desired outcome? We find out that um, the desired outcome is that the food should be served not more than 11 minutes from the time of ordering. So when you ask customers, what do they think should be the ideal? Some of them say that even if it's 11 minutes, they, they, they don't mind, but 14 minutes is too much. We find out that 11 minutes is the desired um, minutes. So if, if you can bring it down to 11 minutes from 14 minutes, at least customers will be happy. So here is the gap, meaning that 11, 14 minus 11 is a three. So three minutes here is the gap within the system. So how do you bridge this gap to remove these three minutes? It's just like similar things we did in our first um, case study of uh, resolving issue within a real estate firm. So the same thing here, we are trying to reduce the gap here. And the, the gap here is the time. That is the waste. So what we are employing here is lean methodology to remove this waste, waste of time. And to do that, the, this is the action we, are, we need to take in order to get rid of this um, three minutes. Now, the first thing is to obtain more opinion from the customers about the experience and ask the employees what would help them to provide faster customer service. Maybe you find out that the customers I mean, the, the employees, we find out that the employees here, they are struggling with maybe some equipment in the kitchen. There are maybe some of the equipment they don't know how to use, they are struggling, and this is taking them time. Maybe some of them don't know how to use the, the, the gas or the cooker or the oven or the baking. Some of, some of the things that can make the employees to be providing um, sluggish service because they are struggling, struggling with the technology or with the equipment. So after that, all you need to do is um, Train the employees to provide uh, provide faster service. Some of the areas you feel that they are, they need to be upscaled. You upscale them, train them in so many areas to improve their service. And once you train them, you find out that uh, their services, their mode of operation will improve, and they will provide faster service that will help to get rid of these three minutes. So these are areas. In the other time, in the first case study, we removed the, the waste by removing the landlord. But this time around, we are providing training to the customer. So there is so many ways. You can't say that is a, there is, is a particular way to do it. You analyze and you use your expert judgment to figure out which solution or which way to help reduce the waste or increase value within the system and uh, get rid of the gap within the system and then come to the desired state. Do you have any question? Okay.
Then another technique we are going to use here is a uh, requirement prioritization technique. This technique, we call it Moscow analysis. In Moscow analysis, it helps you to prioritize their requirements in the order of uh, the requirements need. When you are generating requirements, you will come up with a lot of requirements that will help you to provide a good solution. But if you don't arrange your requirements, if you don't prioritize them, you might not know which one to come first. So you, you provide the first one that comes first will be the first one that this solution cannot do without. These are how you, you, you prioritize it before you go into development. If you don't prioritize it before you go into development, you might end up starting with the less important requirement. And then before you come with you come up with the most important requirement, you might get you know out of uh, resources and it becomes a problem. So that's why it's very important to do prioritization. Moscow analysis is derived from the four prioritization category called must have, should have, could have, and won't have. That is the meaning of where the Moscow come from. Developers will deliver all the must have first. Then should have and could have, but the should and could will have to be the first to be removed if the delivery time is uh, threatened. So if you start in a project and you prioritize their project, this is the number one requirement you need to, to deliver. Let's use the where maybe we are trying to implement an e-commerce website. All the features we want to come up with that e-commerce, we have to prioritize them. Let me use a um, real life example to do this because prioritization is very, it looks, um, it, it might not look so important, but it's very important. Okay, for instance, we are, we are asked to produce this particular application. So, in this application we are looking at, all these features, they are requirements. All these things you are saying, we call them requirements. This is a requirement. This blog is a requirement in this particular application. So if you are meant to start this requirement and we need to start operation as soon as possible with our limited resources, the first thing we need here is the ability to start showcasing our product which is to make sure we have a front end. This is number one requirement. So if we are trying to prioritize, it should come first. And ability 
to collect our payment. Because here, every other thing is just uh, to make this thing look beautiful. But the main thing is for us to show customers our product and collect our payment. So we must have a, a front end where we have product pages. These product pages must be here. And we must have a shopping cart to add our product to the, so that customers can be able to put their product and pay. See, the product is now in the shopping cart. So, and the next thing is we can just pay. So now, if we are meant to prioritize this particular requirement, front end should come first, shopping cart should come um, uh, login because we cannot make payments until we log in. So login should come second, so that registration and login would come second and then shopping cart will come third. Then this blog, all these things is good, is could have because it cannot stop us from making our payment. This flash sale, this is advertisement, is good, but it can't stop us. So all these things are things that are good, but they cannot stop us. So that is um, how this wish list, this wish list, they are good, but not, uh, they can't, so some of these are some of them that will come later. So if we are meant to prioritize this particular requirement, front end first, login or account system to shopping cart three, then others can then follow. So that is how we use this particular technique to prioritize our requirements. So must have is non-negotiable. Is a minimum viable product. It can deliver, it can't um, deliver on target date without this. So you cannot deliver without, you cannot deliver this particular solution without this particular requirement. Not legal without this, unsafe without it. Without this project is not viable. So if this particular requirement is not there, so there is nothing you can even do. So it is a must, just like a front end is a must in that uh, web application, e-commerce application. And payment system is because you are not just developing an application for people to go down and watch. You want people to buy so you can make money. So these are the main thing. But blog, even if you don't have blog, so many who, who is who want to even read the blog? People are interested in buying products, not to read blog. So then should have important but not vital may be painful to leave out, but the solution is still viable without it. May need some kind of uh, work around. So this is good, but this solution can survive without it. Could have desirable, but not important as should have. Only do if there is extra time and budget. So we can only have blog if we have extra time and budget. And this particular one is a boundary. 
would have time wouldn't have time uh who have this time around at all not on budget nice to have but has no real impact so we should not bother our time trying to go into this uh, area at all in order not to waste our time and resources so that's how we can prioritize our requirements using um, this so this one in terms of effort you can see here if you apply 60 percent of your effort in this particular number one must have then other efforts should then start coming towards this and this is just can be uh implemented with contingency if you have contingency maybe extra you can implement so out of the 100 percent effort you have this one alone is taking 60 percent of your work and time and the resources in order to make sure that uh, the application comes out or the solution comes out so that is what we mean by moscow analysis so another another do you have any question on Moscow analysis? Okay. The next one we have here is uh, brainstorming. Brainstorming is a group activity that is meant to generate a large number of ideas. In business analysis, most of the things we do, we come up as a team to brainstorm for solution. There is no ready-made solution in the market. That's why you are there, because there is, if there is already made solution, they would have, yeah, there will be no need for business analysts. They will just go and buy the solution and fix it. But because there is no solution, we come together to brainstorm, to work together, to look for solution. You crack brain, you look at various solutions, you look at problem, you look at various solutions in the market, you look at how to solve. So these come up with so many solutions, ask so many questions before you come up with the solution that will match the need. Because there are so many solutions, but there is no solution. So what I mean, there is so many solutions, but there is no solution. If you go to the market, there is, if you want to, to implement e-commerce, there are so many commerce applications there. But you might want to implement, find out that none of them meet your, your, your need. It's either they, they don't meet your need because they are costly, or the one you want uh, do not have the kind of uh, capability you want. So you need to walk around, think, brainstorm to come up with the one that actually meets your need. And that is where brainstorming comes. You, you select a lot of solutions, then you start filtering them. So let's look at various uh, brainstormed solution for this particular problem. Let's say this is a, a local government, a local government council trying to solve the council problem. Now, look at looking at this problem, the streets are really dirty and they're full of trash. So that is the 
problem the local council is having. Now let's look at this particular brainstormed solution. The first thing is to ask why is this a street dirty and full of trash? Why? Trash can. Trash cans are full, are too full. What is the likely solution? Help the city figure out which trash can should be emptied more often. You ask another question, why is the street dirty? Trash, trash fall out of trash can. Solution, get bigger trash can. Then another question to know why this is happening. What is the behavior that causes this problem? People throw their trash on the ground. Likely solution, put a poster asking people not to throw trash on the ground. Another question, what structures causes this behavior? City does not have enough trash can solution. Can the city uh, get the city to put in more trash can? Then another question for this uh, problem. What beliefs cause this uh, behavior? People do not feel responsible for cleaning the streets. Solution, start a community club or community service that clean up the streets on Sundays to help people feel more involved. Another, so another question here, what's the behavior that caused this problem? People leave large items such as, such as furniture on the street. Solution, give out tickets for leaving these items on the street. Then the last question here, what rules or habit causes this? People do not know how to properly dispose of large items such as furniture or do not feel like scheduling a pickup solution make it easy easier for people to get rid of these items by starting a service that will come will come and pick them up from people's home so this is as you see now we are here as a team and we've brainstormed all this so maybe as we are here like in this uh, meeting we are 11 or us here and 11 or four say okay say so let everybody come up with a solution you see that there is so many solution and once there is so many solution now we start looking at selecting which solution becomes the best so that's how we use brainstorming in business analysis. Do you have any question on this? Okay. Now, another technique is uh, what we call solution evaluation solution evaluation solution evaluation we look at all the solutions you've uh, brainstormed during the brainstorming session you come up with a lot of solution you have too many solutions you don't even know which one to choose become has become a confusion for for the team Solution evaluation includes the process to validate 
a full solution or a segment of a solution that is about to, to be or has already been implemented. Evaluation determines how well a solution meets the business need and the business needs expressed by stakeholders, including delivering value to the customer. So now we have so many solutions. There is a, as we need, the first thing we need to do is to set up acceptance criteria. That is a benchmark to measure each of these solutions to make sure that we get the required solution we are looking at. Our, our problem we have, the need we want to sell, so we have requirements. So which of these solutions meets this our requirement or the need? Because maybe we are trying to solve this problem. We have a budget of, um, let's say, 10,000 pounds for this. So we need to uh, compare this solution against this our cost. Any of the solution that is above 10,000, no matter how good the solution is out of this our requirement, it, didn't, it, it does not match our requirement. So we are throwing, throwing that particular solution away. Then we we'll look at performance. We we'll, we'll look at the, these solutions. Do we think the performance matches the kind of um, requirement we have? If it matches, if it doesn't, we throw it away. Then say usability. We might have a, a very beautiful solution, but look, looking at uh, maybe geographical location, for instance, you, I've seen so many solutions that I want to use, I would have loved to, to, to bring down to Africa, but we don't have the capacity to use it in Africa. It's not usable, maybe because our banking system, it doesn't work with our banking system. You know, before Paystar comes, comes up, Paystar can float our wave. It was very difficult to make payment online in Africa. So you find out so many solutions we use here, we cannot use them down there because of that. If you want to implement e-commerce application, it becomes difficult because it's not usable because there is no, no, no payment gate will support it. So these are some of the things you need to look when you are trying to evaluate a solution. And once you set up the acceptance criteria, you use the acceptance criteria to measure the solution. And whichever solution that um, goes through or passes the acceptance criteria then becomes a solution. So this is how you do that. You compare that is the major way of you know, evaluating solution. without um, seeking an expert judgment or professional judgment. So within yourself, as a business analyst, you can use this part, simple technique, acceptance criteria, to analyze and measure solution. If it passes, th this test is the test you use to conduct it to check if it meets it meets this uh, particular criteria. Here you have pass or fail. If it fails, it doesn't meet the, the, the requirement. Or if it pass, it means it meets the requirement. So, but at times, this particular um, mechanics or techniques might not be enough. We might actually need an expert judgment to help us, maybe when we have two solutions or three solutions that meet all these requirements, how do we do it? 
Then we can say the what we need to do is we go to um, Gartner.com. Maybe it will help us to come up with uh, analysis. They have very good analysis. They used to analyze by rating to for you to know the actual solution that is best for your business. So what I will do is that I will quickly navigate to our web browser so that we can look at Gartner.com because it's something you need to know as a business analyst because I don't see how you are going to survive analyzing various solutions without knowing Gartner. Let's see Shopify and then Gartner. Let's use maybe we are trying to to, to find e-commerce solution to help us build our e-commerce website. So Most of us know that Shopify is a very powerful e-commerce solution. For instance, now we have maybe after brainstorming, we, we pick Shopify and so many others, and so many of them meet our requirements when we are doing our internal, internal analysis. But we need an expert judgment to pick one out of all those solutions. So we choose Gartner, so that we use Gartner as a pointer to analyze or compare other this. So now we have Gartner. Gartner um, is now rating Shopify 4.4 out of uh, 390 rating, which is very good. And this is what they use to, to make their expert judgment. They did their evaluation, evaluation and the contracting, what people, um, how people contract uh, using uh, this Shopify. Another one is the integration and deployment. So the easy of integrating other third party application, because most of all these application, what we consider is that is that application easy for you to integrate other third party application. Now we are using Shopify and you want to add another payment. Can you add another payment through Shopify? Does Shopify have good uh, integration or API that will help you to integrate? Or is it easy to develop and deploy? And the Shopify as a company, as a software, as a solution, can they supply, can they support you quickly when you call on them, when you decide to use their application. These are the things, because some of all these uh, vendors, once they bought their product, you start calling them, they will not uh, respond to you quickly. So now we've seen Shopify. We know there are so many of them. So let's compare Shopify with others and see. Now, we see there is so many other e-commerce applications. We have Megato e-commerce, we have big commerce, we have VTES e-commerce platform, we have SAP Commerce Cloud, we have Oracle, Oracle Commerce, we have um, Salesforce 
B2C cloud commerce, we have uh, so many of them have Oracle Netsuite, to have Megato Open Source, Adobe. We have Intershop, you can see so many of them. So how do we make judgments now with all this? So, so now, well, Gartner makes everything so simple. You see the rating here, they don't do, they, 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 they can be, they, they, they can be biased in the analysis. They are, they are well known that they are recognized globally. So now let's compare Shopify with others. Let's say these three, let's compare them and see the way they analyze. We've selected Shopify, uh, select this one as well. Select this one, and we can even say, select this one. So, and let's compare these three, four solutions. Okay. In our analysis, you see that, um, Big commerce is rated 4.4. Megato is rated 4.3. And um, Salesforce rated 4.3. And uh, this is the breakdown of this analysis. This is the rating breakdown. So digital store, you see the way they are, the rating, where the rating comes. So, and then after that, you can see under this evaluation and contracting evaluation and see where they are rated. This is the breakdown of the rating. Then under integration and deployment, you see the breakdown of the rating. And support, uh, you see the breakdown, how everything comes. You can equally see the likes and dislikes. You can equally use them, even if all this is not enough for you to make your expert judgment. So now click here, you see Shopify is now here. You see that Shopify is, okay. Let's say, let's do elimination method. This one's three points, this, this, this. Which one are we going to eliminate? Let's eliminate this one. So is now, so this one too needs to be eliminated because this two is 4.4, 4.4. Let's do elimination method again. We have to for our analysis now. So we are looking at these two solutions now. Which one do we go for? Now this is 4.4. This is 4.4 as well. Although this more people rated here and more, but they are still 4.4. And you can see here the overall rating is this uh, big commerce is 90%, and overall rating um Shopify is at nine percent, so you can see that big commerce is even beginning to top Shopify. But we still need to bring other things into consideration. Looking at the cost, you know, looking at um, price flexibility, which is a big cost for for us. You see that Shopify is rate, uh, big commerce is rated four point four. And Shopify is rated 4.5. So in terms of price flexibility, ability to understand need, these are some of the things we are looking at. This is beginning to go down in their rating, and this one is beginning to go up. Integration, this one is going down, this one is going up. So although these people, they have, they give people more attention than this. 
but some of the key things we are looking at, which is uh, price, because we are a small company, we just want a more price flexible solution that can help us to start. So these are the area we look at. So that is um, another way you can do a thorough solution evaluation coupled with the one we've done internally. Do you have any question on this? Okay. Then then the next thing we we'll do is um what we we'll call business case. Business case provide justification for undertaking a project, program, or portfolio. It evaluates the benefit, cost, risk of alternative option. It provides a rationale for preferred solution. So in business case, you summarize all the analysis, everything you've been doing from the initial initiate stage of the project before you choose a solution. It's a document that help you to summarize all the activity you've done, requirement gathering, you've done requirement analysis, you've done solution, uh, you prioritize your, your requirements using Moscow analysis, you do solution evaluation, you do brainstorming and do solution evaluation. Then in business case, you make a summary. Now we have chosen, after your solution evaluation, you decided that you choose these three solution. But out of these three, this is the number one you want the company to use. But in case something happened, that number one doesn't match again, they can go down to number two. If, they, if something happened again, they can go to number three. You've selected three solutions, and now you want to use business case to summarize everything, write your report you are going to submit to the management for them to approve the solution that you recommended for them. That is how um, you use business case, and that is the purpose of business case. You start by the executive summary. Short summary of the business case. Describe at high level the problem, synopsis of the analysis, and the explanation of the recommended solution, general, generally written as the other section are uh, utilized to complete. So then secondly, come to problem statement. You clearly and concisely state the problem. Describe the problem here. Then this is a, your requirement analysis. All the analysis you'll be making, the, depending on the kind of uh, analysis, if you use gap analysis, process mapping, even your, your diagram, you need to import everything here and do your analysis. If it's a root cause analysis, you use a, a root point, root um, fishbone diagram, you bring everything here. For instance, you do, after then you come to solution evaluation, where you evaluate the solution, analyze all the solutions, it's three solutions, all the analysis, you have to bring it here. All this rating, how you come up with the solution, how you rank the solution, you, you state all of them here. Then you come here, you do what you call cost benefit analysis. Cost benefit analysis, you analyze the cost and the, the cost of the, 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 the project and the benefits of the project. You compare the two of them and come up with the value. If the, the cost of the project is 
more than the value. There is no need of embarking on that project. You know, so this way you justify that the benefits that you are going to drive from this project is bigger than the cost. And again, that the cost is within the budget. Then here you do recommend it. After all this uh, long grammar, you come here and make recommendation. Why explaining your recommendation for the project, how uh, you came up with the decision. So that is, um, that is how you do it. Let me see if I have um, some Hello, Charles, can I ask a question? Yeah, you can. Okay, so it's based on the last slide you shared. Which one? What the, is the, the name? business case. So I think it's a solution part, right? Yeah, I'm coming. Trying to bring your life. Uh, you, can, you can carry on with your question. Or do you want me to show okay. the slide no, no, again? No, no. no it's not, not, not a problem. So I was going, uh, my question is, um, I remember there was a slide you shared when we were looking at, um, I think it was root cost analysis, or root, and, and I think it was a gap analysis where you mentioned where you can have multiple solutions. That's as you are looking at a case, you are looking at multiple solutions. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to come to a point where you have multiple solutions, uh, based on the last two or to be able to come down to two, um, Shopify and then the other, this thing. So if you have multiple solutions and you feel, do you leave the, the client to take, to take um, a decision on one? Let's say any one of them can work. And then you can also say, these are the cost benefit analysis for each one of these. Do you allow them to take a decision on which one they want, or must you end up with a recommendation on one on one solution? And if you understand what I'm saying. If you if you if you saw what I my this thing at the end of that um, business case, mm. I said you make a recommendation. This is where I said it recommendation this is solution option solution option means you at least you may you need to give the the clients options you don't force one solution on them you must at least select in my case i normally select at least three solutions i even at, at times four solutions but out of those four solutions selected, I must recommend one. Okay. And out of those four solutions, I must prioritize those four solutions. Now, this is my number one choice. This is my number two choice. This is my number three choice. And this is my number four choice. Okay. So, and I will analyze all of them based on their merit and i will recommend one but in case you don't like the one i recommend you can have options choose from all the all the 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 the, the four solution i recommend which i feel that four of them meets your requirements but the one i recommended is the one that is most suitable for your requirements it's okay, so, so, and what I'm trying to show is um, 
some business cases, live business cases. This is a business case from one of my students, you know. is now he got a job with british petroleum two months ago as a business analyst so this is the his business case let me show another business case This is my own business case, one of my projects with some one of the companies I work with. So I write my own business case. So it has to be very detailed. Everything like this is my, my gap analysis, current future states, the problem, everything I did within the project, I, I'm bringing everything in. My current state that is the Aziz, even my process mapping, I'm bringing everything in. So in business case, you leave nothing, I don't leave anything out. All your analysis, you know, it becomes the documentation for that particular project that someone can all the time fall back on to understand the project or the solution. So this is the project of uh, robotic process automation. So as you can see here is, um, is a option one, Option two and is a very lengthy business case anyway, but that's how I so but as a junior business and who is starting in business analysis. You can make it simple, you know. That's why I shade the other one as well, which is very still very good. You know, this one is still very good. Like um, you can see, it's very 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 simple. So, which I will want you people to implement something simple like this, not. Um, you might not follow if you want, because all of you are graduates. So you can go and you can use my own if you want. When the time comes, you can use my pattern. After all, some of you are even have more, more learned than me. So I think we are going to be stopping here tonight. Uh, so before Friday, we are going to finish. That's my my promise to you guys. We we'll still have a lot, but we are we are we are getting there. So, any more questions? Good. Well, I don't... Okay, Benny.
You have a question? No, I don't. Okay, I thought you said you have a question. Okay, no problem. I wish you guys good night rest. <laughs>